Hi, and welcome back to the Java Web App Tutorial Series. So far in this series, we've built a CRM application complete with login and authentication through Spring Security, a CRUD view where we can view and list contacts in our system, and a dashboard where we can see stats over them. In this video, we want to turn this application into a progressive web application. Essentially, what we want to allow our users to do is install the application on their desktop or on their phones, and we want to be able to customize the offline experience. So if people try to open up this installed application while they're offline, or if their connection happens to go offline as they're using the application, so that they can get a branded experience and feel like the application is working throughout the entire thing. And again, I want to remind you that there is a text version of this tutorial up on vaadin.com. So be sure to check it out so that you can find all the code. You can copy paste it from there. Also, if you're just joining the series right now, you'll be able to find a link to download the sources from the step that we're at right now so you can follow along. Okay, so if you're not familiar with progressive web applications from before, there are essentially two things that are needed for us to turn this application into a progressive web application. The first is a web application manifest. It's a JSON file that just describes the application to the browser, its name, icon, colors, so on. The second thing is a service worker, which is a JavaScript file that sits between our application and the network inside of the browser. It gives us full control over how we want to deal with caching of assets inside of our application, meaning that we can determine that we want to have some content available offline. For instance, in our case, we're going to uh, serve a custom offline fallback page to our users. Okay, so now that we know the basic building blocks of that, let's use Vaadin's PWA annotation to generate those. The PWA annotation allows us to configure a whole bunch of things, but there are only two things that are mandatory. So the first one is name. We need to give our application a name that's visible to the browser. Second one is a short name. So as people install this application, for instance, on their phones, they might not have enough space underneath that icon for the long name. So we'll give it a short name that we're sure that will fit underneath the icon. Okay, so either start your application server or build the app, depending on whether or not you have the server already up and running. And let's see what we have so far. Okay, so I'll refresh here and you'll see two differences from what we had before. First one, the most obvious one is this install prompt that showed up down here. The second one is the favorite icon up here in the browser tab. If we open up the developer tools, you can do that by right clicking and doing inspect and then selecting the application tab. You should be able to see that we have this manifest file that I just mentioned and, and it has pulled the information that we added. So the name, the short name, and Vaadin has provided uh, a default icon for us. Let's begin by customizing the icon to something that's specific to our application. For that, the first step is creating a new directory inside of the source main folder. This one will be called web app. Inside of it, we'll create another folder called icons. And in there, I will drag an icon that I have. You'll find this exact icon in the text version, but you can use any PNG that's 512 by 512 pixels. Since we're changing static files, we need to restart the server. So this will take just a couple of seconds. And then when we go back to our browser and refresh, what we should see is this new icon here. Now I've noticed that at least in my Chrome, the app manifest tab here doesn't get updated unless I close it and open it again for whatever reason. But you can see now that the icon got updated. It's shown here. It's shown up here as well. So that's a good start. Now, if we shut down our server and refresh our browser, you'll see that we already have a offline fallback page here. Often you'd like to kind of customize this to fit your application a little bit more. So let's take a look at how we can provide our own custom offline fallback page. We can override the offline page by creating a offline.html file in this web app directory. 
name this HTML file. I'll provide my own implementation. Again, you can find this in the text version if you want to use the exact same one. Essentially what I'm doing is I'll give the page a title, a link to a style sheet that we'll create in a second, have a wrapper div for the content. Inside of it, I have a image, a little witty header, and some information text that people know what's, uh, what's happening. And then there's a listener for, for the online event, and that should reload the browser so that if, if the browser detects that it's back online, it'll attempt to restart the application. All right, so go, let's go ahead and create the files that we have here. So the offline CSS first, it should be in a styles directory. So we'll create a new directory. Styles. The directory name here corresponds to the ones that we uh, explicitly allowed in our Spring Security configuration in the last video. So be sure to use the same, uh, same name. Here we'll create a file called offline.css. Here we'll define a couple of things. So we'll turn the body into a flex box that centers items horizontally. We'll determine a font family, a background color, make the content wrapper div 80% wide, and give some margin to the offline image. Second thing we want to add here is the offline image. So I'll create a new directory again, images. And I will use the same image that's used in the text version. So if you, you can either download it from there or use your own image, there are no uh, restrictions on this image. It's just a random image that I decided to use for this particular offline page. So Vaadin will pick up the offline HTML page just by convention, by name. But the name of these CSS and uh, image files here are completely arbitrary. It's something that we made up. So we need to tell Vaadin that those should get cached for offline use. We can do that by defining an array of offline resources here in the PWA annotation. And the paths here are relative to the web app directory here. So styles offline.css. This can be a little bit confusing because these resources are, like I said, relative to this web app directory, whereas these CSS imports are relative to the front end directory. So even though these CSS uh, imports look like they are coming from the same folder. They're coming from different folders. So just keep that in mind. Second one is the offline image. Offline.png. Okay, so let's start the application server and make sure that these get picked up. Okay, so we'll reload the browser. You can see that we have the icon visible here here. If we open up the inspector again, we'll be able to see the icons here. And we should be able to see that there is a service worker that's up and running. So that's provided by Vaadin. But what's interesting, though, is going into the cache here, and just verifying that we have the offline PNG, the offline HTML looes correct, and so on. So for instance, right now, I can see that the offline HTML is still not the one that we uh, created it's because we can see that there is a new service worker here waiting to activate. Sometimes it's easier to just go to clear storage. If something's kind of out of sync at any point, just clear all the data, refresh the page, just make sure that you have all the latest stuff here. So now we can see that we have the HTML page that we defined ourselves. We have the manifest and everything here. Okay, so I'll close the dev tools here. So now that we've defined all the PWA stuff, our users have two different ways that they could install the application. They could use the Vaadin provided install prompt down here, or they could use the browser provided install button up here. Now, personally, I don't like showing this to my users just because it's a little bit intrusive. And instead I instruct them to use this one up here. It's a little bit cleaner. It's up to you how you want to show this to your users, but I'll show you how to disable this just in case you don't want to have it popping up there. You can use enable install prompt in the PWA annotation and setting that to false. So let's build that and go back to the browser. 
Let's refresh. And now you can see that we don't have the prompt down here, but it still shows the plus icon up here, allows us to install it. Let's go ahead and install this. Now what you can see is that we have now a completely owned window for the Vaadin CRM. It has its uh, title up here in the, in the title bar. Its icon is down here in the dock. And we can use the application the same as we have been able to do before. Finally, let's shut down the server and see that the offline fallback works. So refresh this. And now you can see that we have a custom fallback page that's specific to our application. So there you have it. We've taken our CRM application and we've turned it into an installable progressive web application. Be sure to join me in the next video in the series where we're going to cover an important topic of testing. We're going to take a look at how we can build tests both for testing the logic of our application as well as building tests that actually exercise the entire end-to-end -end application by running browser tests. Subscribe to the channel and enable those notifications just to be sure that you don't miss that video when it's coming out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.